Starship 20 brings the heat. Its orbital launch tower grows a pair. Crew Dragon moves to a Halloween launch, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday night, SpaceX spun up SN20's vacuum engine preburner, the first time the variant has ever done so while attached to a Starship. Shortly after, the company Pooch, Zeus, a Boston Dynamics spot robot, took a walk around the rocket to inspect the situation. We haven't seen a preburner test in a while. SpaceX performed them back in the day with the sea level variant, so it only makes sense they would test these out in the same manner. Then last night, Thursday, SpaceX put on a double header, two static fires back to back for the first time in nearly six months. This first fire up utilized the vacuum engine. They were able to do this at sea level because Raptor has a very high chamber pressure, which in turn allows for a large expansion ratio nozzle without flow separation at sea level. And then exactly one hour later, a second boomage included both the vacuum and the sea level engines on board. A few heat shield tiles were lost in the process, but that's expected. They are literally, literally shaking out the problems. Ha ha. Road closures are still in place for next week at this time. What's next is probably tests with all six engines equipped, but we'll just have to wait and see. This past Monday, we saw Starbase crews transfer another cryo shell down Highway 4 to the orbital tank farm, along with a storage tank. And like a scene out of Groundhog Day, it was repeated 24 hours later with another storage tank, followed closely by the final cryo shell. Thankfully, we weren't stuck in a time loop. This week, skates were also installed on the launch tower, which will allow the rocket catching arms to move up and down the structure. And on Wednesday, those arms were lifted up and attached via the carriage they're equipped to. Of course, those robotic arms will be used in part to catch boosters. In order to do that, they'll need to move. This week, Starship Gazer spotted the hydraulics that will allow that to happen. <laughs> I cannot wait. I've seen robot arms in action before, and it's quite a satisfying experience. But before any of that can happen though, SpaceX will need approval from the FAA that's currently performing an assessment of the Starship program's impact on the local environment. This week, the government agency held a couple public hearings receiving input from literally, literally anyone in the world that had something on their mind they'd like to share. Booga, 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 booga. Thank you for your comments. Whee! Sadly enough, that still made more sense than what this nice lady had to share. My last name is pronounced Inojosa, and you should utilize your Spanish interpreter to actually pronounce the last names of people who live here locally. At minimum, there should be real Spanish outreach. Uh, this is, SpaceX is frankly just another example of environmental racism. A big, massive, billion dollar company. SpaceX is a bad neighbor and should not be granted any permits. I'm absolutely disgusted with our local officials who have just been taking Elon Musk's money and not speaking up for our communities. Bruh. Mm, kind Karen. Okay. See, when I say we can't just ignore the madness going on in the rest of the world, this is yet another example of what I'm talking about. This is why I refuse to stay quiet. Space and SpaceX is not immune from politics or crazed public opinion. In fact, sound pro-American policies and public support is crucial. Left unchecked and unchallenged, pun intended, these progressive ideals will erode away the American Foundation Starship rests upon. And mark my words, nobody will be going to Mars if they have it their way. We'll all be trapped on this dumb planet with anal wholesale or whatever her name is. Listen, you guys know I love animals. Countless times I picked up strays on the side of the road. Both my German Shepherds are rescues. I want the wildlife in Boca Chica to be taken care of. And I know SpaceX does too. Remember back when they helped save the local turtle population last winter? Awesome face paint job, what do you think? I like turtles. But this program is more important for humanity in more ways than one. If you think policies and decisions being handed down by those in DC won't have an impact on the Starship program, you're sadly mistaken. I mean, why do I feel like I'm the only one trying to get answers regarding Biden's vaccine mandates for federal contractors and the impact that will have on SpaceX? Is that not important? 
Are we just gonna pretend that authoritarianism isn't making things worse? How bad do things have to get before people wake up and realize that our country runs on individual freedom? Flakes can be pissed at me all they want, you know. It's a personal problem if they haven't figured out yet that I'm not the type who cares. I make these videos for liberty-loving patriots around the globe who want to see America's leading rocket manufacturer succeed in space. Hoo-ya! And by the way, thank you Rumble viewers for the 100,000 subs. Party on! The good news concerning the public comments is that most, I'd say best guess about two thirds of those who called into the Zoom meetings, were in support of SpaceX's efforts. If the government decides to side with the company, a finding of no significant impact or mitigated Fonzie will be issued, allowing Elon to move forward with up to 20 suborbital and five orbital launches a year. That is until new permissions and licenses allow his team to increase their cadence. If the government sides with the hippies and SJWs, a completely new EIS will need to be done which will prevent SpaceX from launching and landing super heavy boosters in Starbase, Texas, stalling American ingenuity for years and providing a leg up to the Chinese Communist Party. However, if that happens, I imagine SpaceX would begin focusing most of their efforts on their oil rigs turned spaceport sea platforms. And although that would still create massive delays, it would be a much faster timeline than waiting for a new environmental impact statement to be completed. One thing is clear though, SpaceX is acting like things will go their way as they continue to build the next Starship super heavy vehicle. And just one other small piece of SpaceX news for today, the Crew-3 mission slipped a day and is now expected to launch at night on Halloween. Let the record show, I would like the crew to paint glow-in-the-dark skeletons on their spacesuits. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> On October 16th, ULA launched an Atlas V rocket out of Cape Canaveral, Florida, placing NASA's Lucy spacecraft on a trajectory toward two swarms of asteroids around Jupiter. To get more stupider. It will make a trip to each swarm, reaching the first one no earlier than late 2027, then flying by Earth again in 2030 to reach the second swarm in March 2023. NASA believes these asteroids contain information about the early solar system. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. And shout out to those supporting the making of these episodes. You can do the same by checking out the links in the description below. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.